¿Qué pasa contigo? What's up, people? It's your girl Gracie, and today we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a headband with a fascinator on it. And the type of fascinator I'm going to be making today is the bow or the bow tie fascinator. Before we get into the video, please make sure you like, subscribe, share it, because this is the time we have to be able to learn new skills and do new things. So please share the video and subscribe. Please don't forget to subscribe. That being said, let's get right into the video. So first things first, I'm going to tell you guys the measurement you're going to use for a general, the general measurement you're meant to use for a headband, a turban cap, a normal long turban, anything that has to do with the head measurements. I'm going to tell you guys the basic measurements. So for a headband, the basic measurement is uh, 22 by 5. So the 22 is the size of the head. And the 5 is the length. I'm going to show you guys in the next clip. I'm going to show you right now. But that's the basic measurement. That's if you're, you can't see the person you're making it for. But if you're making it for yourself, you can take a measurement of your head like this. Take a measurement and look at where it stops. Don't make it too tight. And mine stopped at 21. So that's the measurement of my own head. So instead of me doing 22 by 5, I'm going to be doing 21 by 5. And some other people have bigger heads too. And some people are wearing um, wigs, they, are, they have braids on and all of that. So you can, you, that also like adds to the size of the person's head. So make sure you know the measurement. But if you can't see the person, use 22 by 5. Then for a normal turban cap, you're, you're doing 22 by 13. 13 is also the length. I'm going to show you guys in one of my other videos, but that's not what we're doing today. I'm just telling you guys the basic measurements. So right now, the measurement we're using is 22 by 5. So I'm going to show you guys right now. Okay, so just so you know, this is my left, this is my left hand and this is my right hand, so you can know the way I'm doing it right now. So, um, when you're doing, when you're measuring the, uh, the material, what, when I said, um, the normal measuring length is 22 by 5, I meant, get your tip rule from, make sure the edges of your materials are straight. So you measure it 22 22 by 5 by 5 here so 5 here or either you measure it straight like this the 22 or you measure it this way you can fold it and measure it so if you're folding it to measure it that means you're going to measure it half the size so if the normal size is 22 if you're if when you're measuring it full is 22 when you fold it you're going to be measuring 11 so you measure 11 measure 11 fold it until you get 11 11 by the same five here so that's how you're going to measure to cut it so when you're done when you measure it like that you can now mark it i'm going to use and it's advisable to you to measure the person's head because sometimes some people's head are bigger some people's head are smaller and it depends if the person is wearing weaves or wigs or something like that so you would me and me going to use 21 because my head is not as big as 22 so i'm going to use that 10 and a half so when you're done measuring like this when you're done measuring like this you you and you measure your five you would then use your tailor's chalk that's why we have a tailor's chalk and it's advisable to use white but i don't have white anymore so you mark it You 
you mark it very well. Once you have done all of this, you can now use your zigzag scissors to cut the material. So we're going to start cutting right now. Oh my god, this is a terrible piece. You're going to have to cut it this way. This is my left. This is my left. This is my right. So you're going to cut it. Just measure it again so you can be sure that you haven't moved. The material by mistake so you see i moved it a little so you're going to move it back forward again and now it's more so you take it back a little again okay so now you can now cut it so take the material and cut it very very be very precise when you're cutting it Then when you get to the line, you will now turn it and then you can cut behind the line so that in case you have any mistakes, you can always correct them. the material you should have something like this i know this is not the straightest that i have done but you guys should be here with me you know this material was not enough so this is what you should have so now i'm going to cut the uh the material for the bow and the length we are using is the length we are using for the bow since it's a small one we're doing eight by five it being the um the size and five being the length too so we're going to cut that one twice i'm going to show you guys in this next clip right now so for this one we're going to be doing eight by five that's what we're going to be measuring i'm going to be measuring it twice so have enough material my materials are almost finished but i have enough so have enough material to do this so i'm measuring it eight it when you measure the eight you mark it so see it is marked eight by five by five so same thing when you get your five you mark it You mark them so when you're done marking this is why you need a ruler and right now i don't have a ruler so i'm going to have to trace it but that's not a problem for me because i already know how to do it but if you're just starting you need to have a ruler like it's compulsory so just trace it mark it very well Now I'm king. Every day I'm balling. Every day I'm glowing. See me now I'm shining. The spirit of God is all over me. Every day I'm balling. Every day I'm glowing. See me now. Make sure that you are not making any mistakes because once you cut you can't go back anymore so 
make sure you measure it very well so you can know if you're making mistakes or not mm -hmm. measure them very very well and so one we didn't make any mistakes so now we can cut it as i said you can cut behind you can cut behind the lines so in case you make any mistake you would be able to correct it so you're going to have to cut behind the lines here right now The first piece of our puzzle now let's move to the second piece same thing eight by five so we measure again from the beginning okay so when you're done cutting that one you should have something like this two of them you should have see this when you're if this line is still showing make sure you clean it with maybe a wet rag or something just make sure it's not there or make it the inside of your um your sewing so this is what you should have when you're done cutting so we're going to move straight into sewing it now if you have a sewing machine this is going to be really fast and really easy for you but for those of us that don't have the money to buy a sewing machine we have to use what we have so we're going to be using our needle and thread so i'm going to show you guys how to use a needle and thread to sew um this material now using a thread and needle for to sew this kind of thing can be very tricky so first of all you need to get your long needle and your black thread you can you have to use the color of thread the color of thread you're using has to be the color of the material you're using too so you first of all you have to thread your needle how you thread your needle you have to um fold this line into, into two so i'm going to draw it really long and fold it into two like this to the length to whichever length is comf comfortable for you so i'm just going to do that and then i'm going to put it into right now it's doubled if you can see it it's doubled so now i'm going to put it into my needle Guys, threading the needle can be really hard, but don't worry, you'll get there. You'll be able to do it. So now, right now, this this the thread that's inside this needle is going to double again and it's going to become four strands. That's how to thread the needle. It has to be double. If not, it's going to the uh, when you sew it, when you're done sewing, it's going to cut. So now after threading the needle, I'm going to show you guys how to sew. The material because the sewing is not going to be the normal sewing that you always do that we're always we're used to already no we're going to be doing another type of sewing so i'm just going to show you guys how to sew with the needle and the thread so how are we going to do this we're going to fold this is the material we have right so we're going to fold it into two and then we're going to sew we're going to sew this part and this part and this part. We're going to sew them closed. But you're going to leave this side. You're not going to sew this side closed. So I'm going to show you guys how to sew it. Okay, so this is my left and this is my right. I always sew from right to left. So how to sew it? Let me show you guys how to sew it. Mm -hmm. So you take your needle. Mm -hmm. You put it through. Put it through but don't drag it completely you won't drag it completely you're going to drag it but not completely and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put it through 
this one that you didn't drag completely you're going to put the needle through it like double you're going to put the needle through it and then you're going to drag it i know most of you already know how to sew like this if you already know how to sew like this then lucky for you it's going to be really easy just try to make sure it doesn't get tangled up like mine has just done so that's how we do it so that's how that first one is going to be And then for the remaining ones, we're just going to put it through and make sure the space you're giving is not too much so that when you can, when you turn it, see the space I gave. The space I gave was not too much between here and here. So make sure you don't give too much space. So when you put it through, you're going to turn it this way and then drag. So that's how we're going to do throughout the entire material. So just get com make sure you're comfortable because this can... Okay, so now I'm done. When you're done sewing, your sewing should look like this. It should look something like this. Here. So now we're going to turn to this side. Returning is basically the same thing. You just put the needle, same as you've been doing always. And drag. Same thing. Try not to make your thread too long. If not, it's going to get tangled up. So when you've done... That then you will now finish sewing to this side, sewing this side. And if you're new to sewing like this, it's going to take a really long time, like to be able to finish sewing. Because I remember when I started sewing, like it took me like 30 minutes to just make something as small as this. So don't worry, you're just learning with time, with time, you're going to get better. So don't give up hope yet. There's still hope, and there's time, so don't rush. And don't give up so we're going to keep sewing the material and make sure when I said make sure the space you're giving is not much look at how little my space looks and if I should turn it now you won't see any spaces like I used a machine to sew it as you can see so try to make your spaces your spaces as little as possible yeah so I'm just going to finish sewing this one and then i'm going to come back and show you what i got okay so i am done with sewing my material and it took me like 20 minutes to finish so please if you have a sewing machine please use it because this sewing is really stressful so when you're done your sewing should look like this as I said, I didn't sew this place because I'm going to turn it inside out right now. So let's start turning. If you guys know an easier way to turn this thing, please tell me because I don't even know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> As you can see my sewing you can't see it's really neat looks like a machine sewing that's one of the and it's really strong it won't cut that's one of the advantages of using um this method to sew like it's really strong so next we're going to we're going to fold it and then sew it again so let's try to do that 
Okay, so I got to a point and I was actually meant to sew it like this. So this part that you sewed is going to be inside. You're meant to join it together. So this place that you sewed before, you're going to have to lose it. So if you have not sewed it, don't sew it at all. Okay, so we're going to sew it together like this. Remember, the place you sewed is going to be inside. So this is how you're going to fold it. And then you're going to sew this part again if you have a sewing machine please use it because this needle and thread is going to waste your time it's going to take a lot of time but if you don't have it's not a necessity you can still use your needle and thread like i'm doing right now it's just going to take more time it's not actually bad i think it's the best for reals so we're going to start sewing again so we're going to start sewing it again. Make sure it's well in the middle. So you won't, when you wear the band, you won't be seeing it through, you won't be seeing it behind or in front of the band. If not, it's going to spoil the look of the headband. So we're going to sew. Okay, so I'm done showing it. So this is what it looks like. So when you're done, this is where you're going to get the headband. This is it. This is going to be the inside. This is going to be the outside. Okay, so when you're done doing all of this, doing all of this the next thing you're going to do you're going to have to make this place a little bit smaller so that the head but the uh fascinator can stay on it so what we're going to do we're going to our needle and this time you're going to have to use the needle and the thread because you can't use the machine to do this so double your needle and thread as normal and then what you're going to do it's spread like this so you're going to go around the normal way we sew with a lot of space so you're going to start from behind here we're going to go like this then we're going to come back out so you're folding it basically and then you're going to bring it out and drag then we're going to move to the second side. See, I just did this side. So now we're moving here, this way. We're going to put it in. Put it in. Bring it out. And then put it in finally. And when you're done doing that, you drag. So when you drag it, you should have something like this. You should have something like this. So when you've done this, then you tie, you tie your, you tie it. Tie it, it's normal. Anyhow, you know how to tie it, but make sure it's really tight. If not, it's going to come loose. And that is that for the band. This is what you're going to have when you're done with the headband. You can do this sewing inside. Let it be inside, so it's going to look like the way this inside looks but still anyhow you do it it's, it's still good you're still going to end up covering it so this is the headband now so now i'm moving to the fascinator guys when you're doing your fascinator make sure your your material is ironed right now my material is not ironed because i don't have my iron right now so i'm still going to do it like that anyways so now while sewing these two materials together and we're sewing them all round don't worry, I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn them. But we're sewing them all around this time. So get comfortable. If you have a sewing machine, as I said, you can use it. If you don't, 
get very comfortable because this can take a while so i'm going to start sewing and then i'm going to show you guys the end result you guys already know how to sew it so i'm just going to sew it and then show you guys the end result okay guys so finally i am done i'm done so this is what it looks like right now mm -hmm. i sewed it all around so i told you i'm going to show you how to turn it so basically you're going to put your um clothes down like this and then hold it like select one layer let it be like this select just one layer and then use your scissors to cut the middle and you have something like this you have something like this this little hole so from there you can turn turn it please be careful if not it's going to it's going to tear more Turn it, turn it, turn it. You want me to thaw out, but you know I get ice cold, I get cold when you don't go slow. But I know you want more. You need me to thaw out, and I know you are worth it, and I know this good work. turned this is going to be your front so as i said before okay so now we're done with this is the like not the total end product so now what we're going to do we're going to sew the way we sewed this place we're going to sew it but this one is going right in the middle it's going right in the middle so you're going to take it from the back again Put the needle through, it can be as big as you want, depending on how much ripples you want. Do it. Just make sure it's in a straight line so you, it won't bend. Make sure it's in a straight, and make sure it's in the middle. So that you're going to have two equal sides of the bow. So you're going to keep doing this. Everybody knows how to do this, so this shouldn't be hard for anybody. And when you're done, you drag. You see? We have made the bow and then you tie and there we have it we have made our bow see very easy so now you cut it and since we have our bow now, it's time to join it to the band. Can you see where we're going with this? It's so beautiful. So now we're going to join it with the band. This joining does not have to be a complex sewing. It's still, you still have to use your needle and thread. But this doesn't have to be a complex sewing. You can just do the normal in and out sewing that we normally do. It's not complex. So we're going to, again, we're going to start from the back. Start it from the back. The sewing, you know, the normal sewing. Just try to make sure it doesn't show too much in front.
both sides you're going to have to sew both sides to the band if not it's going to come off like this so you can just it's not hard to do it's really easy and so with that we are done with it but now you can you can't just leave it like this it looks so plain I would say so you can add your little designs that's where your stone and your gum comes in now you can use um, a pressing iron to put your stones for those that know how to do that I'm going to do that in another video but for today since it's a really small um, fascinator I'm going to be using my gum and my stones so I'm using my stones and my B6000 I don't know how to do this, but the name of the gum is B6000, so that's the gum I'm going to be using. Okay, so you pour out the, um, pour a little out on the table. We're not using that much but let's just do that okay and your gum is open turn them out very well. okay so you pick up your stone many of us already know how to stone stuff so just make any type of design you want on it And this gum stains, so you have to be very careful. If not, your fascinator or whatever you're putting the gum on is going to have a lot of white spots on it. And it's not going to be easy to wash out like that. So you have to be very careful to avoid those kinds of mistakes. You have to be very precise. You put the gum on the... You put the gum on the stone and then fix it wherever you want to fix it on the fascinator. And we are done for this. Look at how beautiful it is. Can you see this? For this front, you can either add a cloth fascinator or you can just cut a very small material like this, probably this part. Cut it. Something that can go around to the back. You can cut it like this and then use it to cover this place. So that it can look a little bit neater. And I think that's what I'm going to do right now. So I've done that. And I've put a little stone, some stones on them. So now we are finally done with the headband and the fascinator. So I'm going to put it on. And look at how beautiful this is. As in, are you guys not feeling this thing? As if I went into class now, I'm looking on fleek. You can wear it to the side. You can wear it in the middle. It's really nice. So you guys, do your own. Send them to me or via email or Instagram. My Instagram is down there. Snapchat, anyone. And if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions, you can comment down below. Leave a comment. Or you can send me a message and I'll try to answer all of you guys. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like, share and subscribe. And if you're just coming new, go back to the first video so you can see the things you need to be able to do all these things that I just did now. So you guys stay safe, remain at home and see you guys.